Today I'm going to show you how to add a subscriber to your call manager cluster. Um, to be able to do this, first you're going to need a publisher call manager that's up and running. You'll need the security password that you set up when you installed the publisher. You're going to need a bootable image and an OVA file. So let's go ahead and get started. I'll go to System, Server. And there's our publisher right there, and I'm going to add a new one. CUCM voice and video click next and then I'm gonna go by IP address my publisher is 10.0.0.10 so I'm gonna go 10.0.0.11 leave that alone leave that alone leave that alone I'll just say CUCM subscriber I'm gonna leave that as default and click save And that is all that I need to do right here. Um, so now I can go ahead and start building out that um, subscriber. So I'm going to go over to ESXi. And I'm going to deploy a new machine. I'm going to deploy from an OVF or OVA file. And I'm going to call it lab UCM 2. And I'm going to find my OVF file. And I downloaded this from Cisco's site. Um, you do need a partner account um, to get it directly from Cisco, but you might be able to find it elsewhere. Go ahead and click next. I have one data store, so I'll go ahead and click next. And. I'm going to choose 2500. User node next. And finish. Okay, so I'm going to go into my new machine and edit settings. I'm going to keep this all the same. I want to go down to CD, DVD, Drive 1 and use Connect. Make sure Connect at Power On is checked. And I want to change this to Data Store ISO File. Um, I already have a bootable disk. If you look back in this series towards the beginning, I think it's the second video of this playlist, there is a video on uh, creating your own bootable ISO. So I already have it uploaded into my data store right here. So I'm going to select that, save, and then I'm going to power it, it on. Actually, it looks like it powered on automatically, so I'm probably going to power it off. Okay, now I'm going to power it on, and it is opening up that ISO so that's a good start okay and I'm going to skip this and Cisco Unified Communications Manager yes Proceed. No upgrade. Basic installation. Continue. And for me, I'm going to use America Detroit. Click continue. No. No DHCP. So I, this is lab. CUCM 02 for the host name and um, I'm going to put in the same IP address I added to my publisher. So 10.0.0.11. The IP mask 255. Uh, 255.255.0. Gateway is 10.0.0.1. Now obviously this 
information or this address might be totally different for your network and you need to apply the IP address that you need to use for your subset and your subnet in your lab or production environment. And okay. And um, I actually will enable DNS on this. You don't have to, no. Um, and then this is the platform administrator. So I'm going to make it the same as it is on my publisher. So this is the credential you use to log into the, the web page, the CM administration page. And then this is going to generate the certificate. Um, so when we log uh, when we log into this web portal, we're going to error because it won't be signed by a third party certificate authority. Um, but that's okay. And if you want to, you could go ahead and get that signed by a certificate authority. And this is very important right here. Is this server the first node in the cluster? No. Now I'll click OK. The next phase of the installation will verify network connectivity to the first node. Please select yes if the installation should pause after this verification to allow the installation to be completed at a later time, such as a maintenance window. Please select no if the installation should proceed. So we want to go ahead and click no, at least I do. It might be different for you um, if you're running this in production. Okay, so host name is lab tcm-01 is the name of my publisher. The IP address is 10.0.0.10 and then the security password. So hopefully you have that written down somewhere so that um, you can use that. And then um, I'm not going to do that. You can do that if you have a mail server. And the platform configuration is complete. And so the installation is now going to start. And depending on your hardware, this process could take a couple hours. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and hopefully there won't be any errors and uh, the next time you see me uh, we will be um, looking at the subscriber and uh, the publisher okay that took a lot longer than I expected I had a problem actually with NTP um, the server that I set up for NTP for the publisher no longer exists so when they tried to um, set the new subscriber NTP um, it threw an error, so I had to make a new NTP service, but that's okay, it worked. Um, so the installation finished successfully, so I'm going to go ahead and log in to the CLI. Maybe. Okay, I logged in. And I actually made a mistake when I set this up. I gave it the um, the wrong set of credentials um, but in any case I figured it out and am logged in so I'm gonna go utils service list and let's see how the services are doing it can take a really long time after an install for these services to start and it is actually not showing me all the services, so I'm going to start an SSH session so that I can actually scroll. Stock alert. Amazon RX 6600 XT. Is utils service list. 
And this can take a while. Oh, it didn't actually take too long. Okay. And it looks like enough of the services have started so that I should be able to get to the web page. So I'm going to do that. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and log in. And it is letting me log in. And I can see that it synced with my publisher because here is my um, evaluation mode license and it has 68 days instead of 90. So I know we are in sync. Um, I'm going to start some services now. So navigation, Cisco Unified Serviceability, and then click go. And that will take you to this page. And I'm going to go to Tools, Service Activation. This is my publisher. I'm going to go to my subscriber and click Go. And for this lab, just to make things easy, I'm going to check all the services and click Save. This might take a minute for those all to start. Okay, and that is it. Um, for the next video, I will actually set up failover. Um, right now, this isn't really doing anything. I have to create the device pool so that um, and the server groups. First, I need to create the server groups so that I can add that to the device pool, and then the phones um, can actually fail over to the backup uh, should something happen with the primary. Amazon so RX thank you for watching please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and uh, stay tuned for the next video if you want to um, set up uh, failover